morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. With us this morning is the head of the Knoxville Police Department, Chief Eve Thomas. She is a veteran police officer and we welcome her back to this broadcast. With us this morning as well, Susan Richardson Williams. She happens to be a Republican and runs her own PR firm. Don Bosch runs his own law firm. He happens to be a Democrat. Welcome to all of you. Good morning on this Sunday morning and Chief. Uh, we'll get to some specifics about Knoxville in a second, but first let's talk about a statewide issue that made news this week. In the Senate, we saw uh, legislation passed that would remove the need for a gun permit to carry a weapon in the state. You have voiced your opposition to that idea. Why is it a bad idea? Well, first of all, it, it takes away our ability to ask armed persons to identify themselves. Uh, another aspect of it is there is no required training, not online training, not any kind of training. Um, and of course, also, we don't have access to the information that TBI has to see if people have the uh, authority to carry, uh, if they have any of the uh, things that don't allow them to carry. Uh, so generally, we can only access warrants in our in our crime database uh, and search local criminal histories. So that's that's a big detriment as far as knowing who's allowed to. Uh, again, we don't have the authority to, to disarm someone when there's a perceived threat to law enforcement officers. Uh, so it's it's got a lot of detriments, unfortunately, for law enforcement. Chief, we know about a, more than a dozen states do have what uh, supporters call constitutional carry. Do you see any empirical evidence from those states that show crime rising or falling when it's in effect? No, and, and you know, I actually don't have any empirical evidence to, to, to show that either way. You know, of course, last year across the nation has been uh, an anomaly, I think, with violent crime being on the rise. But especially here, you know, in Knoxville, our violent crime has risen tremendously. This is just a bad time to enact this, I think, in my opinion. Chief, I want to move to something else that happened this week. You held a Facebook Live event for the first time for the community to ask questions, in particular about the investigations that are ongoing about the gun violence we've seen recently. What did you take away from that conversation? You know, it, it, it's a new format for me, and so I look forward to doing it again. Um, I think we don't want to have any questions off the table. Of course, ongoing investigations in, in particulars in those we can't really ask, uh, we can't comment on. We don't want to uh, undermine any of those investigations. But, you know, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway is that I wanted to leave with the community is that, you know, community pol policing is a partnership. It's, it, it's us and the community, the police and the community engaged together to solve these problems. And so we need help. We, we can do it on our own. That takes much longer, and we have to have just the right things in place. Uh, and that, that takes so much longer than if we work together. Susan, go ahead. Well, Chief, uh, for those of us who don't engage in this world every day, like you and Don Bosch do, what what is causing this? What's happening out, especially around Austin East? Is it gangs? Is it drugs? Is it something else? I've just let us, you know, let all of us who are listening today kind of know what you perceive as the real issue in that area. You know, I wish I wish I had the magic ball to tell you. I think it's all of the above, everything you mentioned. You know, we have, unfortunately, during COVID, we can't um, meet with our community. We can't meet in those community groups to get information and share information. So that's really hurting us. Um, our, our young people are not in school uh, and, and some are. Um, but they had been out of school for quite a while. And so we do have some, uh, some gangs that have formed using young people. And, you know, everybody has a, a, a need to, for, to belong. Some parents cannot be home and, and pay attention to kids. And, and sometimes school is the really o the only structure they have. Um, and I hate to put that on the teachers, but that helps in, in the long run with, with kids to have a place to belong and have some structure. So I think you know, having been out of school for so long and some still virtual learning, that's that's really been uh, a hard situation. Uh, I think people with COVID and all the restrictions we've been living under for over a year has made people just on edge. Uh, people seem quick to anger in general, uh, and that's tough to deal with. And then you add to that, you know, we do have a lot of a lot of guns and, and, and drugs. We're working a lot of drug investigations with our federal partners. Uh, there's just a lot of there's a synergy of things that have come together. I think that have just created a worst case scenario. Don? 
So, Chief, I, I know you can't talk much about the status of these investigations while they're ongoing, and so I don't want to go in that direction. But I am curious because I see a lot of chatter and I hear a lot of people asking, well, we know this is a, an uptick, a big increase in problems, one particular area of town, although really there have been shootings uh, in other areas as well. What are we doing different and what is law enforcement doing different now in response to this uptick that maybe we were doing a year ago? So, you know, again, I mentioned, you know, community meetings, being out in the community, being able to hold uh, uh, academies, being able to have our safety city operating. Uh, so many things that we did in the community to be out there and accessible were not able to do under COVID. We are, uh, the police department is actually under our, our pandemic plan level one, uh, which means that we try and limit our, our access, our, our involvement with the community to try and limit, uh, you know, personal uh, interaction so that we don't pass anything back and forth. Uh, that's hindered us tremendously. And we have kind of, you know, a month ago, we went away from that. We are out there in the community now. We're walking, doing walking patrols. We're doing biking patrols. We are making uh, traffic stops for probable cause on things that we see that maybe we might have let go before uh, just because in the interest of, of, of being on our pandemic plan. So we have, we have not relaxed and gone back off of our pandemic plan, but we are being more interactive. Uh, we're trying to attend community meetings virtually. So we're trying to work within the COVID environment now, but it's still very, very difficult. So on that yeah. note, then oh, go I ahead. was gonna say, how many of your officers are vaccinated? Generally, I think the last uh, count I had was about 57%, 57, 58% so fully get vaccinated. Back out in the community, right, fully vaccinated. We can get back out in the community now at a greater scale than we were say eight weeks ago safely now you know we we've we've been looking at the data that we may be due for another outbreak so we are trying to be more, even more careful the mayor has just put out another executive order uh we're trying to use our mess we've kind of let our guard down just a bit so we are trying to be uh, a little bit more careful at least for the next few weeks but yes uh being vaccinated has helped us we're going to take another quick break here on Inside Tennessee. When we come back, more with Chief Eve Thomas, the chief of the Knoxville Police Department, right after this.